Hey, good day everybody. This is Peter Wolfing with another video. And today's video is on picking the road or picking a different path. You know, I'm looking over here and I see a path over here, one straight where most people are going. This is the mainstream one where the masses go. Then you see one right over here. Then you see another one right over here. And if you look to the left right over here, and if you come right around this way, which you didn't see, is another one going up that way. Well, when you're getting started in your business, you're trying to figure out what to do next because it's all very confusing. What do you do? Where do you go? How do you choose? Well, this is where you have to rely on other people, such as your sponsor Upline, and decide which way is the best to go. And not always where the masses are going is the best way to go. Right? Especially even, you know, you can apply this video to almost anything, right? Choosing what you do for a career is even another thing. But right now I'm talking about prospecting methods and so on. So you're going through here and you say, okay, you talk to your sponsor, talk to your upline, see what the company's doing and try not to reinvent the wheel and pick the right way to be able to build your business with whatever prospecting method is being recommended by the company. So you've chosen and what you need to do when you choose a prospecting method is to not stop in a few days or a week. You have to give it some time to work. Okay, you have to adjust a little bit, maybe start out slowly and see what's happening there first, and then you tweak as you go along. So you always keep your long-term vision intact, but then at that point you have to adjust along the way. And sometimes when you're starting a prospecting method, you're gonna make you're gonna have to make decisions, right? So coming up here on the path, we have to decide which way we're gonna go, this way or this way, right? And so you decide, hey, let's go over here, let's take a peek this way. As you get run right past here. Cool. All right, so you're looking over here, you say, okay, which way do I want to go? Well, this is another path going down this way, right? Down here, you're not sure what's going on over there. Well, again, you ask questions. You find the answers to your questions. Good morning. Nice walk today, huh? Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you decide maybe, okay, listen, I'm going to go this way because that was what was recommended to me by my sponsor or upline. And you fine tune your marketing method. So after you've done your marketing method for a while, you ch pick and choose another marketing method because you say, okay, I've learned this one. And what so many people do is, look back here again, is they start to market a certain way, whether it's emailing, phone broadcasting, you, you pick the way, but they only do it a short time and they decide whether or not it works. And you can even apply that to network marketing. They start the business and they give it a very short time to work or not work. And then they jump to another one and jump to another one and jump to another one. Same thing with prospecting. You never really get deep into anything to really learn it, to, to get your skills up to a point where you're proficient. And you get mediocre success if that, right? If that, and again, apply this to just doing the network marketing business and or just prospecting in general. You kind of do it a little bit, but you don't really get good at it. So your goal should be to focus on your network marketing business and or your prospecting method until you get really good at it. And preferably, eventually, you get world class at it. So this way, when you become world class at it, you don't even have to think about it. Then you can decide whether or not you want to go into another prospecting method. So, you know, you got what most, many people do is they'll say, read, I'm going to read a book a month for 12 months. Well, maybe it's better to read one book 12 times <laughs> and become really, really good at it. And or Maybe it's better to focus on my network marketing primary program, so I'm going to make really good money with that program versus making mediocre money with five different programs, where it may equal 20% of what you could have made if you focused on one thing, right? So, I'm, hey, I'm all for doing other programs, but you have to do it in the right context, and you have to do it right according to you specifically on how skillful you are in your business. I mean, if you're a mature network marketer, and I don't mean age, I mean you've been in the business for a while, and you're actually making some money, you're pretty good at it then you decide to do something else. I have a, a guy that uh, we connected on, uh, on a Facebook chat and he was very interested in my program. And he said, listen, I'm making $20,000 a month in my other program, but I'm looking for residual income because it sounds like when I was talking to him, 
that his program does not have residual income. So he has to work every month and the next month is zero and he has to work again to get that money. So, hey, it's all okay. That's just what he's working. But he's looking for a residual income and that's why he's joining our program because it has a residual effect to it. So, you know, he's making a very good income there and then he's gonna pick and choose, okay, do I wanna spend 10 or 20% of my time to do my program or 30% or 40%, he'll decide that while he can still maintain his $20,000 a month. So it's up to him to decide how he wants to do that. Right, so as you start to mature and make some serious money in your business, and here's some more choices, which way are you gonna go? You're gonna go over here, here, here. All right, well, I'm gonna pick to go this way. And if he would have not done that, and he was making maybe $500 a month in his business, and then he decided, okay, I'm gonna do another one, another one, another one, well, maybe he does five businesses and he makes 500 here, 750 here, $200 there a month, right? Versus doing the one business and he's there making $20,000 a month, right? So see what I'm saying? So doing multiple programs or doing multiple prospecting techniques is not necessarily bad. It's just that you wanna get good at it so you're actually developing leads and you're putting them through the funnel and you're connecting with people. So like what I was talking about before with the story I had, is I was connecting on a Facebook chat, right? So that's one method. And so I don't do a terrible lot on Facebook, but I do enough where I develop leads there and I farm out the rest of whatever I do on Facebook and my social media to my assistants. And you may have heard many times on my videos and my trainings that if you're not using virtual assistants, you're wasting money. <laughs> you really are. Um, and I, I preach it so much and, and most people just don't heed my, my words and they say they're, you're penny pinching on their business. But anyway, that's a whole nother video. So if you can, get a virtual assistant. If you want to know uh, which one I use for the last four or five years, just email me, let me know or contact me. I'll tell you and I'll give you a link to it. And, uh, but it's, it's really a great thing. And that's how you can start doing multiple things at one time where it doesn't take skill from you where you can do more important things like closing deals and things like that and they can do the lead generation and they can do the initial connecting and then when it comes to you actually speaking to them then you can actually do that let me zoom in here this is one of my favorite spots my um my kids when they were younger we used to come over here and fish for crayfish or maybe other parts of the country they call them crawfish throw in a little line a little chicken bone on there or something, pull them and when they start tugging back, you got them and then we throw them back in. Oh, well, wow, that was a great picture, huh? Now, I didn't plan that. <laughs> I did not plan that. Yeah, one, two, three, four, what is it? One, two, three, and four. Four, three mallards and one female. That was a, a, a great shot. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so guys, when you're doing that, back to my video, my point is that you wanna focus on what you're doing to generate the type of income you're looking at. Now, instead of going this way, I'm gonna go up these rocks here and try to do this while I'm making the video. So sorry about the bumpiness. And sometimes you have to go up and it seems treacherous and it seems difficult, but when you get up to the top, that's a skill that you've mastered. Because it's not always easy, you know, it's sometimes it's difficult to do things that are that are important, that are gonna generate you the kind of money that you want, but you have to do the difficult things. But if you do it one step at a time, if you do it one step at a time, before you know it, 30, 60, 90 days down the road, you're gonna say, wow, hey, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> and right down in here, And you wouldn't know this is in Central Park, right? In New York City, right in the middle of all these buildings. It's a wonder what rolling water and waterfalls, the sound of water will do to your psyche. And I'll give you one of my secrets that I do also, is I have multiple monitors on my computer on my desk. One of the monitors that I have, I play YouTube videos and I type in, if you type in forest and nature, you'll see eight, 10, 12 hour videos of nothing but nature with waterfalls and water and nature and birds and so on. 
and, and I put that on on one of my screens and put the uh, volume very low, but I'll hear it and I'll hear the birds chirping and the water going and it's very relaxing, very relaxing. And nobody else really hears it. <laughs> and one time I had it on too loud and someone said, are you outside? <laughs> so are you outside? Uh-oh, a picnic that way. There's actually a, um, a road, a path that goes up here and it's up on the top of this hill, which is a, a big green area and they do a lot of picnics up there and functions and so on. But uh, yeah, so what it does is, is it tends to relax me. That's why I go out in Central Park all the time to break up my day because I'm on the computer pounding the computer all the time. And the green and the nature is a soothing element for me. And when I get out walking here, I think of things and I come up with ideas. And when I come up with ideas, obviously I make videos once in a while, but I'm thinking about my business and what I'm gonna do next. And, and uh, in between these videos, I'm using my smartphone, following up on emails and text messages and Skypes and all sorts of stuff here too. So I'm, I'm productive when I'm out here, but because of the advent of the smartphone, you can really do your business anywhere. So I, I use a Galaxy Note 4, which is a very big screen. And uh, if I have to access my computer in New York, New York. <laughs> I'm in New York. Um, in my office, I use a free program called Team Viewer, T E A M Viewer, and I can access my computer in New York, New York, in my desk from my smartphone wherever I am if I need to, if it's something I can't access on my smartphone. So, just a little thingy that I've done that you could find helpful. And I'm huffing and puffing. You might hear my little different of a voice because we've had a, a killer pollen problem here in the Northeast and it's extremely high and it's really been doing a job on me I'll tell you so <laughs> just uh, trying to get out and, and uh, work it off a little bit and you might think well if you're having a problem with the pollen what are you doing in Central Park and you are probably right <laughs> but I think the positives of being out here in nature far outweigh the negatives of a little runny nose and scratchy throat so let me get back on what I was talking about. I'm just going to encapsulate everything. I really hope you love this, um, this video here. Is, uh, I'm not usually in this area. So we're talking about paths and t picking the right path for you and, and sticking to one for a while so that this way you can become good at it. Increase your skill level. Increase your prospecting muscle. Because if you don't work enough, at doing something specific like say you're in a gym and you're working out your chest if you don't work it out enough guess what your chest doesn't grow right so if you're doing your prospecting if you're not doing the specific technique enough well your prospecting is not going to go grow and your skill at developing those prospects and closing those prospects is not going to grow right so it's just like anything you got to be able to do it enough to be able to be productive at it and you can also apply that to picking a network marketing company to work give it a shot you know give it a shot to work pick carefully the company you're working but then give it a shot over a period of time and just adjust the method that you use adjust what you're doing but also keep your long-term goals intact and hopefully when you pick that company they were something or a vehicle that you were able to use to get to your goals I mean that's a very important decision when you're first getting started so but you know, and sometimes you have to readjust, you know, those uh, the companies that you have picked, and that just goes with the territory. But just don't do it out of a knee-jerk reaction. I mean, I'm, I'm talking as a company owner, and then it's not always smooth sailing, right? Not always smooth sailing. Here we go. It's not always smooth sailing as far as a company perspective. Things happen, right? But you have to look at the ownership of the company and the staff of the company. Are they genuinely working on your behalf to help you in your business and overcoming any obstacles? And, and in my case, yes, I am. Always. Always. And that's one of the reasons why my company is almost 17 years old and we've helped uh, our members make over $100 million, <laughs> which is astounding. And hundreds of thousands of members over the years is because we stay in business and, and we're out there for the distributor. You know, it's, it's distributor first and company second. And in your case, it's prospect first, distributor second, right? So it goes in that, that order. So 
guys, um, I think I'm going to lose my voice at a moment. <laughs> but I hope you really liked this video. I enjoyed uh, this topic today. Look forward to seeing you on another video. This is Peter Wolfen. Have a great day. Bye for now.